Hi everyone, welcome to my review of Sergio Leone's The Good, The Bad and The Ugly um, in 1966. Now, um, it's been a few weeks since I've done my, um, you know, done another Sergio Leone um, review, uh, mainly just because I wanted to get most of the Bonds um, done and reviewed. Um, but yeah, back on the final film in the trilogy of, um, you know, The Man With No Name, uh, you know, Dollars Trilogy. And yes, uh, this is of course one of the you know most iconic films of all time. And um, if you know if you've seen my reviews of um, A Fistful of Dollars and um, for a few dollars more, um, you'll know how much I love them. Um, and I've of course already said in them uh, reviews that uh, that this is the best of the three. And um, yeah, of course it is. It's um, by far the best of the three, and it's one of the absolute finest films of all time for me. Uh, there's a spoiler, um, and there's of course the box set, um, and yes, um, you know, as I've said before, um, Sergio Leone is one of my favourite directors, um, and he would be even higher on my list if, if he had made um, even just a couple more films, because you know, he's more of a uh, perfectionist, um, but done, you know, really six films that were completely his, you could say, and um, yeah, but they're all, you know, something, and um yeah, um, as I've said as well, you know, my fistful of dollars and, you know, for a few dollars more reviews, um, when I saw these films, um, you know, quite a few years ago now, um, something about these films and the style and, and the music and the way, you know, the way they made me feel, um, yeah, it was really quite something, uh, a turning point, one of the turning points um, for me in terms of cinema. Um, but this film was like another leap uh, beyond what I thought could be imaginable. Um, and this really exceeded my expectations when I first saw it and you know it made it right onto my list you know right near the top of my list of, of best films and it's remained extremely high um, since you know I've seen it uh, maybe yeah this is my third viewing again like the others um, and you know I, on this viewing I've recognised just you know it's maybe not my best experience, my second experience was the best, um, but it's grown on me in terms of quality and my enjoyment for the film, and even more than, you know, the first and second experiences. And yeah, this is just, you know, Tarantino, of course, famously, famously said, um, this is probably like the best directed film of all time, um, and the greatest achievement in cinema, um, and he's not far off, um, he really isn't. Um, yeah, I think that some films are better, but not much. Um, very few films are better than this for me. Um, and yeah, um, of course, Ennio Morricone, you know, he scores the film again. And Sergio Leone, um, you know, directs. Um, now, the opening scene, you know, the previous two scene uh, films in the trilogy had, you know, great opening scenes uh, to set the tone and, 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 you know, the characters and everything and the way that this film, you know, works visually. Um, but the opening, you know, scene to this film is absolutely stunning, um, and it's more of a, a patient, slow, uh, slow build. Um, you know, Lee Van Cleef, for example, um, his character and the way we're introduced to him is, uh, you know, it's a slow build and a, you know, the tension that is within that scene of Lee Van Cleef. Uh, you know, he he plays um, Angel Eyes. He's he's called in this film, um, and it's just stunning, absolutely stunning. Uh, and then you've got the comedic, um, you know, Tuco. Um, he's played by Eli Wallach. Um, and yeah, he's, prob he's probably my favourite character in the film. Um, and then you've got, of course, Clint Eastwood returning once again. Um, he's referred to in this film as Blondie um, this time, but, you know, the man with no name. Um, and he's probably, Clint Eastwood in this film is probably as, as enjoyable as I've ever seen him in a film. Um, you know, you could argue maybe some of his other ones are better performances, but um, I would probably still say this one. Um, and certainly for my enjoyment of his character and the way he plays him, uh, definitely, yeah. This is his, this is his film. Um, and of course he would come to be a, a you know, director now. He made many great films, but yeah, it's, it's this trilogy that really defines him. Um, and certainly this film, uh, yeah, this is his... Um, it's finest three hours, <laughs> you could say. And uh, yeah, um, all the characters in this film, you know, absolutely brilliant. Um, and as I say, the way they're introduced early on, um, absolutely masterful. Um, I thought for a few dollars more, you know, the way they were introduced was just so 
perfect in terms of uh, you know how cinematic and just main, you know, mainly the visuals, uh, the, the visual storytelling that you know sets up these characters and stuff, uh, and the, the uses of silence and everything. Um, but this film amps it up to, to you know eleven. Um, the way they're introduced is so unforgettable, and they of course have you know it comes up with the music, the different. Uh, different instruments, tones uh, used for the three different characters um, and that's absolutely genius um, and you know you see like a freeze frame of, of Tuco and stuff um, and it says the ugly um, and that is just so perfect and the way these three you know the rule of three it is you know relevant in many things you know um, and it works so well here the, the, the character dynamics of these three uh, characters absolutely masterful uh, and of course I've got to tell you the, of course the opening credits um, some of the best in film, full stop. Um, and you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly theme is one of the most, you know, iconic. Um, maybe you know, a couple of themes are more iconic than this. Uh, E.T., Jaws, Star Wars, uh, you know, Raiders and stuff. But this is up there with some of the most iconic. And yeah, the soundtrack overall for this film is in my top five soundtracks. Um, that's how good it is. Uh, every every track in this film and every part is just perfect you know, heavenly, um, and the theme as well, you know, the way it's played throughout the titles, which are so creatively done, um, it's perfect, um, what an opening credits, um, you know, how to use uh, things like um, the different colours and everything, um, just perfect, and yeah, the first hour or so of the film is mainly building these characters, um, and the situations, um, through different situations, you know, like, um, with with uh, Tuco's character, um, and you know he, he's kind of a wanted man, and there's always uh, you know moments where you know you think you think he's going to die, but it's played in a comedic way, um, and I think yeah he's he's my favourite character in this film, mainly because of the way he, he's so funny, and um, but yeah as well you, you think he's got the most heart in the film, um, yeah, but yeah all the characters are absolutely wonderful, um, and the first you know first act, uh, first hour or so is mainly the building of these characters. And uh, of course, setting up the plot, um, which is basically two hundred thousand, uh, you know, dollars of gold is hidden in this place, and um, there's different leads that they follow throughout the film. Uh, mainly, you know, um, Clint Eastwood and um, Eli Wallach's character. Um, but yeah, they they've um, they try and you know they get these leads throughout the film, and eventually they 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 um, they come together to um, to kind of help each other out and uh, track down this gold. And then, of course, while you've got it in the background lingering, uh, Angel Eyes, you know, um, after it as well, and he hears about it. Um, and, you know, he's not quite as he's in it as much as the other two characters, but um, you know, when he is, he's just so memorable. And uh, you know, Lee Van Cleef plays this is probably his best performance. Um, and you know, he played a good guy in, in for a few dollars more, but I think this is definitely his best performance I've seen. Um, you know, he plays the villain main villain of the film um, and the way he's always in the background kind of trying to go um, try and get there before them um, it's so well done uh, it's just masterful and you know the script this is probably the best best uh, Sergio Leone script um, it's just so quick paced uh, witty um, just clear a clear script and um, you know every line really is memorable and uh, the way that the characters have developed through, through the script and everything is just wonderful. Um, but yeah, it, this is uh, really where um, Sergio Leone was at his best in terms of visual storytelling. Um, you know, the way he does this is, is really, is almost unmatched in cinema um, for me. Um, but really what sets this film apart as well is, is it's just how epic um, and operatic this film is. That's the thing. Um, for a few dollars more was more operatic than a fistful of dollars and those flourishes you know like the end jewel and stuff uh, it was like an opera the way the music was used um, and that's the thing I look for massively in films um, uh, not because I you know but the way the music is used basically um, in films is one of the most important things for me um, something that really can elevate films is, is music and the way they're used um, the director can master that um, the way he uses, you know, the scenes with it uh, to the score and everything, um, that is um, that is when you can really elevate a film to one of the best. Um, and everything else already was, you know, absolutely perfect. But 
Um, the soundtrack to this film, um, every single track is, is epic or you know haunting in places or uh, and just the whole time it's just beautiful. Um, you know, I thought you know the ecstasy of gold. Um, you know, before I saw this film, basically I'd heard obviously loads of the tracks, ecstasy of gold, of course. Um, that was probably my favourite um, Ennio Morricone um, piece until I heard the final dual music, um, the trio it's called, um, and it takes place, you know, when the final, um, you know, the final dual takes place, um, the music plays, um, and that for me is probably the finest um, piece of music that Ennio Morricone has ever, um, you know, composed, uh, it really is, um, it's just how epic it is, and as well, the way Leone, um, you know, uses the scene to build and build and build. Uh, yes, like a movement, uh, like a symphony. It's just absolutely masterful. Um, and, you know, the way that the music plays a role in the final duel is um, it contributes and culminates to one of the absolute finest finales in film. Um, you know, the way it's been edited and everything, the way it comes together is, is, is what you call a, a satisfying end to the film. Um, well, it's right before the ending scene, but yeah, um, and as I've said, of course, um, this, the soundtrack is absolutely perfection, um, and you know, the strong as well, that, that, that uh, track is great, and yeah, the music intensifies, um, becomes, you know, better and better as the film goes on, and the story and the intensity of it builds, and you know, as the epic goes on, so does the music build and build. Um, like an opera, that's what you know. Sergio Leone and, and Morricone, the way they work together, um, it's probably the second best pairing um, for a director and, and a composer in cinema, um, just behind John Williams and, and Steven Spielberg uh, for me. And yeah, but the way they work together and, and the way that the music is used in this film um, is perfection. Uh, and you know, another thing that's just far stronger than the um, previous two films in the trilogy um it's just the characters you know um the way that they're you know more fleshed out characters you know they're far better you know and they've all got their different unique um traits and um the way they um they played off you know one another in the film uh, works to perfection um you know you've got Clint Eastwood's more laid back um kind of serious guy um but when you combine that with Eli Wallach um and of course, of course, Lee Van Cleef at times. Um, you, you've got um, you've got a masterpiece, and um, you know the friendship as well. The, um, the very complex friendship, really, that um, the Eli Wallach's character Tuco and, and then Blondie um, have in the film is one of the things that drives it um, so wonderfully. And you know, it, it's never played. It's never um, cheaply done. It's earned. You know, the way that their their relationship comes together. Um, you know, there's this parts in the second um, act where um, they're in the desert and, you know, they're just playing with each other, kind of, uh, you know. Leone is just kind of, um, he extends a sequence um, in the desert uh, and it goes on 15, 20 minutes um, to absolute perfection. Um, and it's just simple visual storytelling, but mastered in such a way. Um, it reminds me of Lawrence of Arabia, actually. Um, and the way that the sun and the heat and everything and the desert is used um, in like this overwhelming way to portray, you know, you know the intensity of, of you know, an isolation of where they are and stuff um, is absolutely masterful. And really, it doesn't, um, yeah, it's, it's just its own sequence, but um, it's absolutely masterful. Um, and you've got moments like that that are just, you know, some of the best scenes really, and um, in film and. You know, when you put them together and you, you, there's such a flow to the scenes uh, in this film they always drive really the narrative um, even if they are like standalone scenes in that way um, and the way that the music drives the film as well um, it all just flows seamlessly um, until it culminates to that to that duel um, which is absolutely something you know legendary but really just unmatched really um, in cinema in terms of a shootout, it's probably the best shootout in cinema actually, the final um, duel and you know it's not it's not like heat where you've got loads of different things going on with other you know, different people but 
Um, it's to do, to do with the editing, um, the music, um, you know, all the close-ups, the extreme close-ups. This is probably where uh, Leone was at his best in terms of that. You know, as I've said, um, the, the juxtapose of, um, of you know the long shots and then the close-ups um, has never been bettered um, for him in this uh, you know in this film. Um, and really, you know, there's not much films that um, are better in that sense. You know, the way the close-ups are used um, than in this film. I think there's maybe one or two. Um, you know, to, to, to in the way that a close-up as well can can be you know giving off intensity and, and stuff. You could say a Clockwork Orange actually, um, which I'll be reviewing at some point. Um, and um, yeah, maybe a couple, one or two other films do this uh, on that level. But yeah, um, that final shootout is is is, is just absolutely perfect. Um, and yeah, the second act is absolutely stunning. You know, you've got more of the um, You've got these scenes where they're captured as well, of course, um, Blondie and Tuco, and um, you've got quite a graphic um, kind of torture scene going on um, in that second act. Um, but yeah, that them scenes and you see the humanity of it all, and, and you know the soldiers and everything, um, and you know the people playing uh, the instruments and music. Um, that is really moving stuff. Um, this is another thing. This film. Uh, you know, it's much more moving than the others uh, in the trilogy, um, and it's got this atmosphere, um, like a melancholic atmosphere. Um, and it's quite a sad film in places, uh, but yeah, it is. Um, it's also his most fun film, and um, but yes, this scene with the torture scene is very graphic. Um, but you know, Lee Van Cleef, the way he, um, he he's such a presence, and you know, the way he's kind of. Um, he is in this scene is absolutely stunning. Um, wow, you know, absolute perfection. Um, and then the third, um, the last third is where it really, um, you know, go leaps and bounds above um, the previous two acts. Um, and the yeah, the final third and particularly the last half an hour um, is some of the absolute finest uh, sequences uh, put to film. You know, the standouts. You know. Where the bl the bridge is blown up and you've got the massive you know battle scene, um, and yeah you know the train sequence as well before that, um, wow that's absolutely stunning, and of course the final duel and and the ecstasy of gold scene before that, uh, you know when he's running it, Tuco's running along, um, trying to look for that grave, um, and you know the way that throughout the film the, the little bits where you know the the actual, um, you know, finding the money is built up, and you know the mystery to it, and um, the way that that's prolonged and, and kind of it's like a delayed gratification uh, that Leone uses, um, so that when finally they find the money and everything, um, well, well, I'm not going to ruin what happens there, but when they when that happens, um, it's so much more, uh, you know, satisfying, um, and yeah, um, that scene, the ecstasy of gold scene, is stuff of legends. And it's immediately topped by that duel. Uh, it's it's so you know striking to see how uh, Leone just builds and builds. Um, you know he betters himself constantly in his film. Um, and when you think you know a scene it couldn't be better than this, um, he just brings you another one that just tops it. Um, and you know that, that I love that ending as well. Um, it really, it's humorous. Um, but it's also quite um, quite touching as well. Um, but yeah, it's um, this film is you know epic in every sense, um, and you know I've said before on my channel how much I love epics. Um, you know, on my Novacento review, which I didn't like, but um, you know I, I've said how much I love epics um, because there's something about an epic where you know you've got more time and potential to you know build characters and stuff, but as well it feels more like a journey. Um, you know, once you finally reach the end. And it's sad to see to leave the characters and, and the actual experience of the film, um, and this is this is one of the best epics of all time for me. Um, you know, it's just a little under three hours. Um, but it feels like a massive journey, and this this experience um, is just unforgettable. Um, it's constantly epic throughout. You know, in in the way the music is used, and you know the close ups, the the jewels, um, and just the adventure of this film. Um, the, you know the reason as well why it's so high on my list is how much of an adventure it is, um, 
and you know the journey that the characters go through and then you know the last third especially um, when uh, Tuco and Blondie are traveling um, yeah it, a great epic as well is, is, is one that um, massive scope um, but also these small personal moments these scenes uh, you know intimate moments little touches um, and little details as well um, within the film that, that can elevate it and there's a, there's a scene as well where there's this soldier dying um, you know after that bridge battle um, and uh, is it, you know humanity as well where uh, Blondie kind of gives him a you know cigarette um, and kind of just you know does it a little something which I won't ruin but yeah it's just uh, so human and uh, this this little touch that um, these moving little scenes that, um, that within this massive you know epic um, action adventure film um, that make it you know one of the absolute finest um, but as well the unique way in which um, Leone uses the music of uh, you know one of the masters of um, you know composing um, you know one of the master composers in, in film history uh, Morricone and the way he uses the music as well um, yeah it's so unique it's never you know you could never really say apart from maybe Tarantino because um, you know he takes a lot of inspiration from uh, Leone you can never really say um, it's been anyone quite like uh, Sergio Leone in cinema in the way he uses this music and uh, you know the editing and everything um, but yeah, um, this film absolutely changed my life, um, and you know it's not quite as uh, it's got much of an emotional a story and, and drive to it than um, as much as you know Once Upon a Time in the West and America maybe. Um, but really, if you take into account everything else, um, yeah, it's just it's so enjoyable from start to finish, um, and so epic, and and so masterful in a direction. Uh, the editing, you know, the way this film looks uh, is almost unmatched. Um, there's only a couple of films that I think are better cinematography than this. Um, but yeah, this is right at the, you know, right near the top of the list um, in terms of cinematography. Um, you know, something else. Um, and yeah, the way that, you know, the film builds and builds with these characters you care about. Um, and you come to love, you know, Tuco's character uh, in particular. Um, and you know, even the villain, you, you, yeah, I mean, he's um, Lee Van Cleef is, you know, detest, detestable character, um, but you enjoy, you love to hate him basically, um, even though he is, you know, this evil guy. Um, you know, it, yeah, when the film ends and you leave these characters, you, I felt like, oh, you know, it's a shame to leave all of them, not just, um, you know, Tuco and um, Blondie. Um, but yeah, this is just so iconic. Uh, some of the shots in this film. Um, you know, just you know, there's many famous shots, um, but that final jaw is just something that um, really is just one of the most uh, mind-blowing um, and memorable uh, you know scenes in cinema. And um, you know, what a, what a um, what an end to a trilogy. Um, the second best, I would say, um, ending to a trilogy for me. Um, just behind another film, which uh, yeah, I won't ruin what the, what that is, but um, yeah, the good, the bad, and the ugly. You know, it's in the top ten on IMDb as well, um, and you know, this is such um, a loved film, and uh, it's probably my favourite film of the sixties. Um, and you know, there's many films that I love. You know, like Psycho, um, and there's another film that's very close to this, um, which I'll get onto. Um, but yeah. Um, this film is absolutely mind blowing, um, and you know, at the time, the, some of the critics, um, again, like the rest of the films um, in the trilogy, you know, some of the critics didn't really take to it. Uh, but over the years, many people have, you know, have, have come to realise, you know, why it is one of the best films of all time. And um, you know, a classic example as well, uh, Roger Ebert originally gave it a, you know, three out of four, and, and, and kind of he didn't quite think it was, you know, as good as. Um, what people think it is now, and you know, in the recent years, um, you know, over the years, he he changed his rating to you know four out of four, and he added to his great movie list. Um, so you know, it's a film that has grown um, over time in terms of how much people like it, um, and you know, now it sits in the top ten on IMDb. Um, you know, it's, yeah, that's pretty accurate, um, fairly accurate to to how good this film is. Um, 
one of the absolute finest films in cinema. Um, and for me, it's the, my second favourite Western. Um, and I, at some point, I will reveal, of course, what that is. Um, but yeah, I'll be reviewing what that film is uh, at some point. But that'll be an unexpected one, actually. Um, but yeah, this is my second favourite Western. And, you know, for for a long time, it would, it would have been my favourite. Um, until I, you know, until this film came, basically, this other film I'm talking about. Um, but in terms of the directing and the editing and stuff, um, this is probably the best Western and stuff. Uh, and, yeah, it's it's really almost unmatched in cinema, this film. Um, it's absolutely, um, it's an absolute masterpiece. So, overall, this is one of the, you know, the truest masterpieces in cinema. Um, you know, Tarantino was, you know, on the money. Um, really, it was not far off when he said um, this is the greatest directed film. Um, you know, the way that the set pieces, um, uh, you know, which are bigger than the previous two, of course. Uh, and, you know, contrast with this, um, these small intimate moments of character building um, and just little, you know, little emotional moments uh, littered throughout. And the way that the film builds and builds in its acts and its structure, um, you know, acting in harmony with the music, um, acting like an opera, like, you know, movements um, within a symphony. Um, that is what um, makes this, has, um, elevates it so much. Um, and, uh, you know, there's not a single scene in this film that isn't absolutely masterful and um, completely um, knocks the other two, um, you know, for a few throws more even, which, you know, I gave a full mark um, to you know, in terms of the number, um, completely, you know, knocks these out of the park, um, and just, he goes, you know, he jumps so much, um, and he, you know, the way this film elevates, uh, it's right near the top of, you know, best films of all time, and, um, one of my absolute favourites, um, you know, the way this film is directed, um, rarely has a film been as controlled, uh, by a director as this, um, he, Leone is in mastery of every single element of filmmaking. Um, not a single note that, that doesn't work. Um, not a single glance. You know, every single frame um, of every shot, of every scene, of every act is absolutely perfect. Um, this is a perfect film. And it's beyond that, though, it goes beyond. Um, you know, as many perfect films, you know, that tick all the boxes, but they are not as you know. As, as great as this, you know, as elevated uh, as this, um, you know, as mind blowing, really. Um, you know, what I say beyond perfection means really you never really, you would never think a film could be this good until you actually see it. Um, and you know, the directing, the editing, the music, um, which is one of the top five scores of all time for me, um, the, you know, all the characters um, and the way that the dynamics work within the, the characters of the film, um, and you've got support and cast, um, you know, the captain, the drunk captain, um, in the last third of the film. Um, another really human character brings out humanity in the film. Um, and you have a bit of humour in there, but it's quite a deep film, um, you know, compared to the other two, which, you know, for a few dollars more, was, um, had some, you know, moving moments, but this is a much more um, emotional film. And um, just how epic it is and adventurous, um, you know, and, and the script working to perfection, um, but never overplayed, you know. Everything that's said is, is really perfect in the script, but, um, you know, it's the visual moments um, and the moments where the music is used um, uh, and everything like that, that, um, that are when the film is at its best. Um, and, you know, Films like this, you know, I watch over and over again for years and years. I try and watch this film, you know, every year. Um, the trilogy, really. Um, because it's such an experience. And, um, you know, yeah, it's, it's a sad year if I don't watch this film, basically. Um, it's one of them films. Uh, like The Godfather, uh, 1 and 2. Or, um, you know, the Star Wars trilogy. Um, where I, you know, I, I, I kind of have to watch this film. Um, within that year now um, it's at that point and um, yeah it's one of the most life changing films for me um, and in terms of how it's influenced uh, the way I look at films and you know when I'm a proper filmmaker um, this will be very you know inspirational for me um, 
you know, because of how, you know how this film is made and uh, the feeling I get from it. Um, and you know, what's even just as staggering is how Leone was able to follow this up with a, a film that you know really lives up to this, um, which I'll be reviewing next. Um, you know, Once Upon a Time in the West, uh, if you didn't know. Um, but yeah, 1966. Um, this was the best film of the year, and f you know. I won't ruin anything, but this and other film and another film, um, you know, are the greatest of the sixties um, for sure. And um, I'm going to give this a really rare uh, rating. Um, you know, I've mentioned that there's this bonus tier um, on my channel um, past the tier one, which you know is pretty much my highest rating. Um, it's like a bonus tier where you know it's roughly my top forty at the moment. Um, have this rating um, and it just means that films that aren't just perfect they're not just um, you know flawless films that, you know some of my tier one films are yeah, that, you know, straight past that perfect mark um, but really I had to just kind of split up uh, on, on some on one of the numbers where I would go you know above and beyond um, the tier ones uh, with films that you know are absolutely the magnum opuses um, of cinema and uh, yeah, my top 40 roughly, not even that. Um, the only films that have got this rating, um, and that is 100% plus tier S. Um, S for special, if you like. Um, this is one of the absolute you know, finest films in cinema, and um, rarely will it ever be topped again, um, and has it ever been topped, really. Um, as I say, there's only um, you know a handful, really, a couple of handfuls of films uh, that I like more than this, and um, I think it will forever remain in my top 20, top 25, um, it's that high, and um, yeah, um, a mind-blowing epic, uh, you know, of a western, and as I say, it's my second favourite western, there's only one western that I prefer to this, um, and this is a spiritual film as well, you know, it's a spiritual experience, um, like all the best films, and um, yeah, it's completely, um, it's just mind-blowing and uh, edited, directed and scored to perfection. Um, yeah, there's a reason why it's in the top 10 on IMDb and it's loved so much. Um, the Good, The Bad and The Ugly, um, one of the most perfect, um, you know, wonderful masterpieces that have ever um, uh, been graced um, in cinema. And um, Sergio Leone proven, you know, more than ever really how how much of a master he really was um, but yes um, the highest rating I could possibly give a film um, goes to the good the bad and the ugly um, if you've not seen this already you know I can't recommend it more than I have um, but watch the other two films um, first because you know they're not they're, the story doesn't follow on from them uh, really but you know you've got some of the same you know actors and stuff in them um, but it's the way the way the trilogy builds and the way uh, Leone evolved um, within these three films is something that's really um, you know fascinating and uh, it, it gives the film more even more of a you know an epic feel. You know you've watched these two previous films um, and then this is where he blows it up on the big you know massive scale um, and he you know he completely you know knocks him out of the park. Um, but it's part of the same sort of tr yeah the same work really. Uh, and the trilogy is one of the best in film, uh, for sure. Uh, thanks for watching my review. Um, and next up will be Once Upon a Time in the West, um, another Sergio Leone film. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching.